Congratulations, you made it to the very final lecture in this course. You've been on quite the journey, so let's recap what you've covered so far. You started by learning what ML is and how it differs from AI and deep learning before moving on to TensorFlow.js and the advantages of performing ML in the browser or even Node.js on the server side. Next, you dive deeper into using off-the-shelf models written by someone else to perform common tasks that are often reusable. You also learned how to work with the raw model.json saved model format directly, setting tensors into and getting them out of the model to view results. You then saw how you could train your own models from a completely blank canvas to solve problems for which an existing pre-made model did not exist. Now, in this section, you started with a simple single neuron that could take single or multiple inputs to solve linear regression problems, and then moved on to non-linear regressions and eventually classification using multi-layer perceptrons and convolutional neural networks. It was at this point you also saw how much time it can take to train a model from a blank canvas and how transfer learning can help speed this process up, especially for convolutional neural networks that can take a long time to train otherwise which then naturally led you to discover how you can make use of cutting edge research coming out in Python and convert it to run in the browser, either by direct conversion on a saved model or retraining the Python model in a CoLab first to save the resulting model and then converting it to the format you need. And then finally, you put all your knowledge into practice to create a full end-to-end -end web app that can detect spam using a natural language model understanding how to convert the text into a numerical representation to then pass through the model to get results. Finally, at the start of chapter seven, you saw how people from the wider community are using TensorFlow.js in the real world. So now it's time to give you a glimpse into the wider world of machine learning to wrap up this introductory course. Each one of the following areas can have a whole course dedicated to it on its own. And based on your interests and experience, you may choose to dive deeper into one or more of these areas now that you know the foundations. So let's get to that. First up, autoencoders build upon your knowledge of multi-layer perceptrons. They can be used for many things, such as transforming a grainy input image into one that's smoother, as shown by the example images on this slide, or even generate new images that never existed before. Now, the key thing here is that there are actually two subnetworks. The first half of a network essentially acts as an encoder, and the second half is a decoder that's joined by the middle layer in the network. By forcing the inputs to go through a middle layer that has far fewer neurons than the original input size, it makes the network use those neurons to encode meaningful features about the imagery it's trained on so it can then decode those features to recreate something meaningful again at the output. You can think of this as a form of compression, if you will. Essentially, the network takes an input and tries to recreate an output similar to that input. Now, this might seem odd at first, but once trained, you can then chop the network in the middle, as shown on this slide, and generate new output images just by changing the inputs to the three neurons that are in the middle of the original full network, as shown. Often, machine learning engineers will refer to this compressed representation as the latent space, which you can then step through with different numbers and see what comes out at the outputs. And here, you can see that in action. A member of the community made his own autoencoder in TensorFlow.js that's able to generate new faces in real time live in the browser just by tweaking two values represented by the circle moving in the square at the top right of this animation that just changes two input numbers. The active change of these input numbers generates new outputs from the model that you can then visualize and explore the latent space is learnt. Also, on the generative side of things, there are ML architectures known as Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs for short. These consist of a generator and a discriminator, whereby the generator is trying to produce outputs such that the discriminator cannot tell if they're the real thing or not. Essentially, you're training a regular classification model for the discriminator, such as a CNN that you already know about, and then a second network is also created to generate outputs to try and fool the CNN classifier known as the generator. This generator network takes some random input values and uses deconvolution to then create new images, which is the opposite of convolution that you learnt about when understanding CNNs. This essentially allows image data to be produced from features instead of finding features from images. Once trained, however, meaning that the discriminator cannot reliably tell the difference between generated versus real inputs, GANs can be used in many creative ways. You can create new sound, video, or even generate images from text descriptions in more advanced GAN-based networks. And here you can see a GAN's outputs in action. 
a member of the community used a GAN to generate rotational variations of a face in this famous painting, and then used TensorFlow.js to track their body's real-world position so it makes it look like the painting is watching you as you move around. In this demo, the image frames generated by the GAN are pre-computed in advance to achieve a real-time performance in this demo. And there are many variations of GANs like the one shown here. On the left, researchers have been able to turn sketches into photorealistic outputs based on the knowledge the GAN has learnt. And on the right, you can see how you can turn text into images to produce results that are really rather remarkable. Maybe in the future, when you need a stock photo, you can just generate one that never existed before and it fits your exact requirements for a placeholder on your website design. Next up are recurrent neural networks, or RNNs for short. These are like multi led perceptrons, but with a time aspect. Here you can see a regular multi led perceptron as you've seen before. And on this slide is a simplified version of that same drawing, so it looks a little bit less busy. This is still a multi led perceptron at this stage. Now, modifying the flow of this slightly, you can now see the structure of an RNN, whereby the hidden layers outputs are actually allowed to loop back to become their inputs as well. You may also hear of LSTMs, which stands for Long Short Term Memory, and are a special kind of RNN. In this case, connections between neurons can form a sequence over many time steps, allowing them to capture temporal relationships better than other networks. Often, you'll see this sort of network being used to solve things like time series data, speech recognition, or even music generation, which is time-based, to name just a few examples. And one other popular architecture right now is the transformer network. These can be faster than RNNs described in the previous slide, and can handle sequential tasks pretty well, such as time series prediction, or even text summarization and translation. In fact, one of their most well-known use cases is for natural language processing. The key difference here is that it uses a breakthrough in research known as attention to understand at each given step through a given sequence what other parts of the sequence are most important to focus on when learning about that data. Now, each one of those areas mentioned could be a course in its own right. Machine learning research is moving very fast, but as you've seen, often builds upon prior concepts. With your new understanding, you can now choose a path that you might want to specialize further in and go deeper. And let's not forget that this course focused on supervised learning techniques, which at time of writing are by far the most popular form of machine learning across many different industries. However, do also check out techniques in unsupervised learning and of course reinforcement learning, which are evolving very fast too. And again, each of these could have a whole course dedicated to just those techniques, so there's still a lot more to explore if you wish to do so. Now, as you go deeper into any one of these areas, you may find that examples only exist in Python or maybe even some other language like C++, which means there's great opportunity to bring such examples to JavaScript users too as you learn. This will in turn mean even more models can be used across industries and use cases than ever before. In fact, now is a very exciting time to be part of the WebML space as it continues to grow very rapidly. And on that note, I'd like to point out some resources that you can use to connect or collaborate with other members of the TensorFlow.js community, which is a great way to share knowledge and go further. First up, check out our growing collection of code labs at codelabs.developers.google.com. You can simply search tensorflow.js on this site to find a whole bunch of useful step-by-step -step guides as they come out from the TensorFlow.js team here at Google every single year. And it's a great thing to share with your team or friends who might want to learn something specific around TensorFlow.js. Next up, the TensorFlow.js team have also formed a special interest group to work on key areas of research in collaboration with all of you. If you're interested in helping create the future of a TensorFlow.js library itself, then do come join us at the monthly TensorFlow.js SIG meetings. All of the areas shown in this slide are actively being worked on by companies and people just like you, so do get involved or suggest a new area of research that's yet to be ported to the library if there's enough interest and you're willing to lead it. Check the URL on this slide if you want to learn more. Or maybe you want to help spread the love for TensorFlow.js if you're feeling inspired after this course. Well, we've also started a working group that meets in a separate monthly meeting to help scale the outreach, education, and internationalization of content around TensorFlow.js through presentation opportunities, blogs, videos, and more. Get in touch with me directly if you'd like to champion TensorFlow.js in your country or region. So to bring it all together, here are some key links you might want to bookmark. Now, first up, you can find our official website for more details on the library itself, and of course, for full API on the link at the top of this slide. Or check out even more of our pre-made models as they come out using the second link. You can view our open source code on GitHub and even make a contribution if you're up for the challenge. We are fully open source after all. 
Next, check the official TensorFlow forum, which is a great place to ask more technical questions, and it's monitored by the TensorFlow.js team. Just remember to tag your post with TFJS so we find it. And we've also got code examples that you can fork in minutes over on glitch.com and codepen.io that provide working boilerplate code to get started really fast, as you've seen throughout this course. Naturally, these examples will continue to grow, so do check them out from time to time. Now, if you're looking for inspiration, head on over to our short 10-minute interviews on YouTube via our Made with TensorFlow.js series. Here, I interview people who have made great things using machine learning in JavaScript on the official TensorFlow YouTube channel, which might just give you some ideas for your next project or find some interesting folk to connect with from the community. Either way, it's a great way to fill a coffee break with these bite-sized interviews or share to others who might be interested to learn more about what's possible with machine learning in JavaScript. And finally, for reading, I'd recommend checking out the two books shown here. The first book by Manning was written by folk on the TensorFlow team here at Google. It goes deeper into advanced topics mentioned in this chapter, like GANs, RNNs, and LSTMs in the second half of the book. And for that reason, it's a great book to read after taking this introductory online course to refine your existing knowledge further. The other book listed here by O'Reilly is a good, easy to follow introduction to machine learning in JavaScript, similar to the complexity in this online course you just took. So if you're looking for a book to recommend to others on your team who prefer to read a book end to end instead of taking a weekly online course, then this is a great introductory resources to share with others as well. Now, the only thing left to say at this point is to come join our really fast growing community. There's far too many examples coming out every single month to fit in a single presentation, so do check out the Made with TFJS hashtag on social media, such as Twitter and LinkedIn, to see what people are making around the world. And if you make something using TensorFlow.js, be sure to use the tag for a chance to be featured at our future events, and I really look forward to seeing what you all create with the knowledge gained on this course. And with that, thank you for listening. You've just completed an incredible journey, transitioning your knowledge from a pure web engineering background to the world of web engineering with machine learning. A huge congratulations on that. Now, as mentioned before, this is a new chapter in the world of JavaScript. So go forth and be creative, use your skills and wow your customers or friends with the knowledge that you now have. Finally, feel free to connect with me and stay in touch too. I'm Jason underscore Mays on Twitter, Creative Tech on LinkedIn, or if you prefer, I've also got a Discord server listed on this slide. Here, I post all the latest finds around machine learning in JavaScript, innovation, web tech, and more. So see you there, and I look forward to seeing how you'll use TensorFlow.js in your industry to create the next generation of web applications.